Greetings everyone. I hope this message finds you in great spirits and in good health. Today, we embark on a journey through time and technology, exploring the wonders of the past and contemplating the advancements of the present. I came across a fascinating website, TartariaBritannica.com, where I stumbled upon a wealth of intriguing topics that I simply couldn't resist sharing with all of you. From cutting-edge technology to mind-bending theories, there's something for everyone on this website. Be sure to check out the description for more information, as there's simply too much to cover in just one video. Now, I understand that the quality of my videos may not be up to par with others, but I assure you that my passion and enthusiasm for the subject matter more than make up for it. And for those who want even more from me, I have a Telegram channel where I share even more exclusive content. So, without further ado, I invite you to grab a comfortable seat, buckle up, and join me on this exciting journey through time and technology. And don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, which you can find in the description box below. Let's get started. This may initially seem like a strange question, but let's have a closer look. Computers, as we understand them, are devices that display results and computations, harnessing the invisible but ever-present forces in nature. Then, by channeling, squeezing, and resisting those forces, computers tame the electrical potential to do our bidding, or calculating in our case. When picturing a computer, we think of a glass tablet or a sleek steel laptop, but these are just fancy casings to interface with the actual powerhouse, the chip. As computing has progressed in this age, it's been systematically scaling down the same technology. The forces of nature have their own patterns they conform to, and the microchip is a miniature version of that. Let us take a brief look at two early computers to understand further the essence of computing. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. 1. The Analytical Engine, the first general-purpose completely mechanical computer. In 1837, Charles Babbage proposed the first general mechanical computer, the Analytical Engine. The Analytical Engine contained an ALU, arithmetic logic unit, basic flow control, punch cards, inspired by the jackward loom, and integrated memory. It's an entirely mechanical machine able to perform calculations involving punch cards. 2 the ENIAC, over 167 square meters in size. Invented by J. Priestber Eckerd and John Mouchley at the University of Pennsylvania. They began construction in 1943, and it was not completed until 1946. It occupied about 1,800 square feet, used about 18,000 vacuum tubes, and weighed almost 50 tons. Now, let's look at one of the new computers that we all know and use. The company, which started as a bookseller, now runs a cloud system with over 2 million servers, essentially amounting to the biggest computer in the world. Computers now are growing to be the size of small towns, held in rows of secure buildings. So, before asking do we live in a computer, we must first consider what a computer is. What scale are we considering? Theoretically, it may be big enough to live in. Let us now take a look in the archive to see what the past may be able to reveal. The same forces we've trapped in our microchips have existed since the dawn of ages. Who is to know which of our ancestors had previously observed the nature of electricity and its many expressions? This image shows a striking similarity to a modern CPU. The first computer in history was huge, what if computers of the past were built into the very fabric of their architecture? Next, we include two popular images circulating in many online groups. Although we don't profess to understand chip technology, one can't help but notice the similarities between these images. Could these so-called primitive peoples of our distant past actually have a far greater understanding of their realm's nature and how to harness its power for their bidding? 
If we look at the architecture, it demonstrates a deep understanding on how to work with nature. As we can see in these images, there may have been a desire to communicate this with future generations. Today, we're beginning to decipher the information hidden in these structures. Now, one could call this a coincidental grand accident in the immense randomness of life. Or, one could notice that the patterns and structures in the realm around us are merely mimicked in our modern computers. As we move forward, we find the following architecture is well-preserved and far more able to communicate its possible purposes. We will now travel to India for an interesting comparison. Looking closely at the architectural marvel of Sri Padmanabhaswami Temple, the precise engineering employed by these ancient builders is breathtaking. They have captured both equinoxes every year for at least the past 1,000 years, and they've been able to communicate this information through architecture for generations, past and present. Could it be that those same architects had also tamed electricity into the architecture? Many of our ancient buildings had lighting loops or earthing strips installed in modern days, what would have happened if they were not there to divert power away from the building? Would the building light up? To explore this theory further, we need to consider that electricity exists in the very air around us. We all experience it from time to time, whether it be from receiving tiny electric shocks when opening a car door or walking on a fresh carpet. Lighting, in essence, is an extreme expression of this force. When thinking that nature always shows us the presence of electricity, it seems more probable that we were not the first to discover its amazing attributes and potential. We may find that, not only had it once been harvested and mastered by our distant ancestors, but they may have woven it into the very fabric of their surroundings. Now, as we know, many of these amazing structures have stubbornly survived the test of time. It may be worth researching these buildings today with fresh eyes, maybe then, we would understand their full potential, and what the ancient builders had fully intended them for. We look forward to covering this in a future post. As we arrive back to our current time period, we can now ask the question again. Do we live in a computer? To answer that, let's first play a little game. Can you spot which of these images is a real circuit board? Answer in the comments. Now, we're not suggesting that we all live on a giant circuit board, but we will be looking at the subject in greater depth in our coming posts. We can assure you that this theory is stranger than you think. So, what did you think of this video? I hope it sparked your interest and piqued your curiosity about the wonders of the past and the advancements of technology. If you found it enjoyable and informative, please hit the like button and share it with your friends and family, so that more people can benefit from this information. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all the researchers and individuals who dedicated their time and energy to uncovering these fascinating facts and advancements. They have made a significant impact on our understanding of the world and have opened up a wealth of knowledge for us to explore. And to all of you who have made it to the end of this video, thank you for your time and attention. I hope this information has been useful and valuable to you. So, until our next journey through the wonders of technology and the past, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, so you never miss an episode. It's been a pleasure, and I look forward to our next video together. Thank you and see you soon.